Welcome to the lecture series of Hiroshima University. My name is Tor Takahashi, Graduate School of Advanced Science and Engineering. Today, I'd like to talk about particle physics, gateway to the quantum universe. Let me begin with these pictures. It is said that our universe has begun a long time ago, about 13.8 billion years ago. Since then, it's keep expanding and we reach, now we see what we, it is. However, the, this concept, the beginning of the universe, was not all story. Let me begin with the story about the beginning of the universe. In 1915, this gentleman, Albert Einstein, proposed his famous theories. A general relativities. In this formula, he found that that formula includes the expansion or shrinking of our universe. However, at that time, many people believed that our universe must be static. Then Einstein himself believed that our universe is static. So he modified his formula, then make a universe static. So this is a story about 1915. Sometimes later, 1929, this Edward Hubble, he is famous for the uh, astronomy satellite. The satellite orbiting on Earth is named after his name, the Hubble. So anyway, he published this paper. The, this horizontal axis is the distance from the Earth. The vertical axis is the distance of the, the galaxy running away from the Earth. So what he found is that this proportionality is. The velocity is proportional to the distance from the Earth. So let's take a look, look at this cartoon. This is the Earth, and I put the two galaxies. Then this white line is the size of the galaxy. So if the galaxy expand, the universe expand, the galaxy on the far distance moving faster than this one. That also means that this picture shows that our universe is expanding. And there's another history, another story that this guy, George Gamow, he thinks that, he thought that if the galaxy, if, if the space is expanding, sometimes ago, universe must be very small, very dense and very hot. Then uni our universe begin like uh, some kind of the explosions. And that story was not popular at that time. For example, this Fred Hoyle, another famous uh, physicist, told that if their theory is correct, that all materials in the universe was created in one explosion, Big Bang, at some certain time in the past. What he meant is that he did not believe this theory of the explosions. And he said that this is a Big Bang. That means that is unbelievable. However, that George Gamow liked this word, Big Bang, and he repeatedly used that Big Bang uh, word in his paper and in, in his talks. And George Gamow also proposed that if that theory, Big Bang theory, is correct, we can't detect the relic of that Big Bang as a cosmic microwave background 
That means our universe is filled with some kind of radiations, electromagnetic radiations. In 1964, two scientists in Bell Laboratory was testing his big antenna. The purpose of his testing is that satellite communications, it's not physics. And what he found is that, actually that's a trouble for them, this antenna received some kind of noise from the universe, regardless of this direction of this antenna. They checked their equipment or data analysis. There's nothing wrong with their equipment. Some kind of radiations, noise for him, them, is coming from the universe. Then some physicists inform that noise, pointed out that that kind of noise coming from the all over the universe must be the, this relic of the Big Bang. Then for this discovery, the idea of the Big Bang is believed of many peoples. So that was story in 1964, less than 60 years ago. So 1964 is the last Tokyo Olympic year with last Tokyo Olympic Games. So thanks to that long story that now we believe that our universe has a beginning. Our universe began 13.8 billion years ago. And since then, that keep expanding. Then we are here now. So this is a story of the expansion or beginning of the, our universe. So let me think of the particle physics. What is the relation between that beginning of universe and particle physics? What is the ultimate constituent of our matters around us? That is one of the oldest questions in the humans. For example, in ancient Greek philosophers, they already considered these questions. Some said that our matters should be made of waters. The other guys think that the matters made from gas, air, or fire, or solid. Or some thought that the matter is a composition of these four elements. That idea is very close to what we have now. However, at that time, even they have a theory. They did not have a way to verify their theory. In order to verify the constituent of the matters, we have to wait another 2,000 years. Then sometimes around the 19th century, we finally reached the constituent of the matters. Let me say, this is a water. We know that water is made from the molecules. Then this molecules made from atoms. Then early 20th centuries, even that atom has something inside that is called nucleus. In this case, the hydrogen atoms, that is protons. Then electron is orbiting around the protons. Actually, this was found in the 1911. Then after that, even that proton has something in inside. That was discovered in 1960s. And now we knew that the proton is made of three quarks. And this is the latest knowledge about the constituent of the matters. Then, what are the relation between this particle and the universe?
let me think of the how we can look into the inside of a very small object. Let's take a look at this materials, this object. Now suppose that this is very small and very hard to break out by hand. Then what we can do? Prepare two objects and get them collided. So in this experiment, for example, in the previous fixtures, we see some black shadow, but we didn't know the, what actually this is. However, that after this collision, we can look, look into this black object and we can identify what this is. And more importantly, this brown object that was hidden inside this white object. But after this collision, after smashing these two objects, we see that this one. So we can find that this brown object was hidden inside this white object. So an actual particle physics experiment, we used this equipment called accelerator, but principle is the same as before, that animations. We prepared the equipment called accelerators, then prepared some particles, protons or electron or other particle. Then get them collided. After this collision, many, many secondary particles spread out from this collision. And if we measure this secondary particle, then it is possible to reconstruct what happened at this collision. Then there's a two key point for this accelerator experiment. One is coming from this fam famous formula, E equal MC squares. If we want to create something heavy using these collisions, we have to provide sufficient energy for this E equal MC squares. That is one reason. The other reason is that if we want to take a look at small areas, the quantum mechanics tells us that if we want to take a look at a small area, the momentum of probe must be very large. For these two reasons, the accelerator for particle physics getting larger and larger because we have to provide sufficient energy on this electron or protons. Then we have a connection between the particle physics experiment and the beginning of the Earth, being, sorry, being of our universe. Because the, at the very beginning of the, our universe, the universe was small, dense, hot. The particle inside that universe was very large energy and interacting with each other many times. That is what we are doing using accelerators. So particle physicists doing the experiment using accelerator to looking to the very small area. That was equivalent to the recreation of the phenomena at the very beginning of our universe. That is a connection between accelerator experiment or particle physics and the beginning of the universe. Then this is the world's largest accelerator to date. This is called Large Hadron Collider. It's located in Switzerland, Geneva, Switzerland. Actually, this is a boundary between Switzerland and France. 
and the circumference of this large accelerator is 27 kilometers. It's very big. This, that size is almost equivalent to Yamate line in Tokyo. And using this kind of the very large accelerator and very large equipment, we now have what is called the standard model of particle physics that include the matters, constitu constituent of matters, quarks, that is called leptons, and also that include the interaction between these particles, matters, to create a very complex object. So there's many, many stories to reach this standard models. Let me introduce one famous story. What is the mass? So what do you answer if you asked, how much do you weigh? Probably you can answer that. But how do you answer if you asked, how do you weigh? That is very difficult question. Because this is related to the nature of the mass. What is mass? So in 1905, again, this guy, Einstein, gave us a hint of these questions. In his special relativity, there is a very famous formula E equals mc squares. That equation means that the mass, m, is a kind of energy, E. You may know that some kind of energies, for example, thermal energy, kinetic energies, potential energies. So mass is one of them. Mass is also a kind of energy. This is what this formula means. Then next question is that, where this energy comes from? Let me show you one example. Hydrogen combustion. Two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen that create two water H2O molecules and release some energies. Then, if you have very precise equipment to measure this weight, if you can do it and compare the weight of 2H2O and H2 and O2, this 2H2O water molecules is lighter than hydrogen and oxygen. This is a very small number. However, that this very small difference between mass creates this energy, heat, in this case. The other example is the nuclear fission. This is a uranium-235. And putting the neutron to this uranium, this is the nuclear fission. That leaves so-called fission product like this and release some amount of energies. This mechanism is the principle of the nuclear plant or atomic bomb on Hiroshima. You may know that this energy is very weak. The origin of this energy is again the mass difference between this uranium and the fission product. And this, this difference of the this small number in kilogram released a large amount of energy. And the origin of the, this mass difference can be attributed to the nuclear interactions, or more precisely, strong interactions. In the previous example, that mechanism of that mass difference can be attributed to the electro electromagnetic interactions, or a Coulomb force. So these two examples telling us that the mass 
origin of mass is the interactions. Sometimes it's an electromagnetic interaction. Actually, the most of mass around us is generated by nuclear interactions or strong interactions. Then molecules, atoms, nucleons, that are they are com composite object. Then what is the origin of the elementary particle like electrons or quarks? Then these gentlemen, Bro, Engler, Higgs, these gentlemen propose that even that elementary particle that was mass was generated, created by interaction between some particles that was not discovered at the time. That is named Higgs boson, named after this gentleman. This idea was proposed in 1964. Then after that, many people tried to find this so-called Higgs boson. And finally, 2012, eight years ago, this particle was discovered by the experiment in the Large Hadron Colliders in Switzerland. Then we finally got the standard model of particle physics. This formula described the standard model. And if we are very good at mathematics, so you can explain almost all phenomena, experiment on Earth using these formulas or equations. And these three gentlemen are person who contribute to making these formulas. More technically, that is called Lagrangians. Then, is that the whole story or not? Or in other words, that it for the particle physics? The answer is no. There's an issue that was presented by astronomers. Astronomers. Why is this dark matter? This horizontal axis is the distance from the center of some galaxy. The vertical axis is the velocity orbiting around the this galaxies. Then the mass of this galaxy can be estimated using this uh, visible light. Then this is the calculations using this um, mass estimate of this visible area. So velocity is going down when the distance is getting larger. However, that Actual observation is this, that is not decreasing or even increasing. So how we can explain the difference between this observation and calculations? We have to consider that something which has mass but not visible are filled in this area like this. So this object, unknown object, which has mass, but not visible, that is named dark matter. And another observation, again coming from the astronomies. This is the picture I showed before. If you take a look at this area, it's like a cone shape. That means speed of expansion of our universe is increasing like this. That was discovered by the observation of the supernova in late 1990s. So in order to make this possible, make this expansion, accelerating expansion possible, we must introduce some energies 
the source of energy or identity of that energy is unknown. But anyway, we have to introduce some energies. That is named dark energy. Then for the, as for the, for the dark matter and dark energy, the amount of dark matter or and amount of dark energy, we can calculate that using that observations. Then this is the result. This is the composition of our universe. Matters that include the star, galaxy, ourselves. That is only 5% of our universe. Then another 95%. Dark matter is 26% and dark energy is 69%. The standard model of particle physics describes almost everything phenomena on the Earth. However, that only describes 5% of our, of our universe. So, we still have many questions which cannot be addressed by the standard model. What is dark matter? What is dark energies? Then other question, which I did not explain today. So in short, the latest finding about the nature in, in the beginning of 21st centuries, we only know 5% of our universe. That is the latest knowledge about the universe for now. So, as a physicist, a particle physics physicist, we want to find out what is this dark matter or dark energies and how we can do this. We think that the Higgs boson, which was discovered only eight years ago, that is one of the key for this uh, to solve, solve these mysteries. For example, that discovered Higgs boson, does it really responsible for origin of the mass? Or that Higgs boson is the only one? Or that has brothers or sisters? Or this Higgs boson is elementary or composite object. That kind of information, we believe that that gives us a hint for the physics beyond the standard models. So in order to study this Higgs boson or other phenomena, we plan to construct the new facilities that is called International Linear Collider ILC, in short, that is a linear accelerator. It's not ring types. The length of this accelerator is about 20 kilometers at the first stage. And that we think it, that is expandable to 50 kilometers or more. This is still design stage, and we are working together for the worldwide scientist. And the candidate of the site of this accelerator or new facility is, is in Japan. So we are working very hard with the worldwide collaborator to make this new facility realize in Japan, actually in the Tohoku area. We are working on the technical aspect and the physics with this new accelerator. But there's another very important point, because this is a very large facilities. In order to construct this kind of large facilities, public understanding is very important. Then we are putting effort for the public outreach. For example, um, we're collaborating with Sanrio and uh, project called Science and the Kitty, 
and making them very good. Uh, clear file like this. Also, we have the ballpoint pen, keyhole, and t-shirts here. Actually, these two gentlemen is a very famous physicist. Uh, for example, this guy is the uh, uh, director of the LSC, Large Accel Accelerator that find the fixed bottoms. Then, for example, last February, we had an online symposium inviting this professor, Peter Hicks. And at that time, we, I set up this satellite in Hiroshima University and hear the, his talk with, with our students. So we hope that that kind of new project, International Linear Collider, can be realized in Japan, not in far future. Okay, this is the last slide. So, particle physics is a research project looking into the very small area, very small object. That means, that also means to reveal how our universe began long time ago. If we have that kind of knowledge, we could probably consider how our universe is going to be in the future. So if we are inter interested in that kind of area, please come and join us. Thank you.